welcome to beautiful Mugello, Italy, home to round five of ELMS 2024. And it's the first time ELMS is racing here and what a beautiful circuit to do so. Just over five kilometers long, 15 turns and a kind of a roller coaster. Let's learn more about this gorgeous circuit with hometown hero, Andrea Caldarelli. <laughs> We are here in uh, turn one in Mugello, the famous San Donato break. Uh, it's very famous because you arrive from a very, very long straight where you hit uh, six gear with the LMGT3 and you arrive around 270 kilometers per hour. There is two ways to really take this corner. There is uh, some philosophy saying that you can take like a, a double apex, like really early here and uh, then uh, kind of let it go a little bit outside and then come back because the corner is really going uphill and it's uh, bank as well. Um, or you can really take just one apex and let the car go all the way outside. Um, doesn't matter really which way, you know, the important thing is really to brake late and use uh, as much downforce as, as possible on, uh, on brake. It's a second gear corner for us. here at uh, the famous uh, Casanova Savelli, definitely one of my favorite parts of the, the track. It's a beautiful chicane that comes uh, uh, from uphill going all the way downhill uh, towards the Arrabbiata's corner. Uh, it's a fourth gear corner, uh, you enter there, uh, little little break, but you try to lift just a little bit of throttle, it's uh, in fourth gear around 160-165 kilometers an hour. After that there is the Arrabbiata 1, Arrabbiata 1, which is definitely the, my favorite part of the, uh, of the track and where we're gonna go next. Arrabbiata in Italian means angry or penne arrabbiata as you want to uh, as you want to say, but uh, they are really angry corners. They're, it's two corners all the way uphill. You come very quick, four gear from the corner that we just saw before. Uh, what is really important in, in these two corners is literally lose uh, less speed as possible. So it's only a little lift for us in the GT cars, um, but uh, really you make a big difference if you, uh, if you just lift as less as possible and that's where you really do lap time in, uh, in here in the second sector. I hope that uh, you enjoy this uh, track walk with me and uh, I see you soon. Ciao! With just two rounds to go in the 2024 season, the battle for the championship is really heating up. And with friends off the track, but rivals on the track, let's check out the atmosphere in the paddock ahead of the four hours of Mugello. season's gone pretty well to be fair I mean we started with a podium in Barcelona got a little bit lucky in Paul Ricard and then like you say in Imola the home race for Euro International and Spa we managed to uh, grab the win so you know the season's going well we're the only team to win two races but I think now it's really important to remain consistent and make sure we finish um, we're getting to the crunch part of the season we're at a new circuit this weekend <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's been a really competitive championship so far this year. Um, the fight's been on from the first race and it's never stopped. So everybody's had a win here or there. And uh, yeah, the fight is very tough, but we're part of it. And happy to be here at the top of the championship and obviously going for the win. Yeah. 
well, this is my favorite tracks. I think of all of any track I've been in is my favorite, uh, and it's actually a really nice combo with the MP2 because of the of all, all of the downforce the car has uh, and the kind of track it is with a lot of fast corners. It's just I think is the, the best place to really um, take the most out of this this type of cars. I'm happy to be here in Mugello. It's a new challenge for the championship for the drivers and I think we have a good chance here. We started already the testing and we look uh, really good already, so I'm really looking forward to this weekend. And like you said, the championship is still to play and, and this is what we come here for. We want to be there challenging uh, to win the championship when it comes to Portimao. <laughs> there has been a new championship leader for LMP2, AO by TF. Now they've been incredibly consistent throughout the season, rising through the ranks to get their first victory last time out. And for this team, it's all about chemistry. So now it was a tough race for us. I think, uh, you know, we had a great pace. We worked on that car with uh, low degradation and then we made a strategic mistake. We got caught out by the, the new rule of the full Corsello and, and the safety car. So we got a lap down very early and, and we could sadly never recover. So difficult start. Yeah, actually, Castellet, uh, we ended up on the podium, but I think uh, we were very lucky. To be honest, uh, it wasn't a strong uh, Sunday for us. Uh, so we, uh, we ended up in good position. So yeah, our competitors uh, had some issues. Uh, we gained, uh, by luck, a few positions and uh, definitely it was a, a good uh, amount, amount of points. Imla, I think second was good, it was good points for the championship, but I think we, we were all disappointed with second because it was such a close race uh, with Panis and yeah, I think we lost out just in the last pit stop, so we try and avoid making the same mistakes again, which we've done well so far. Our first win was uh, as a relief for all of us. Uh, we've been chasing it, the level is so high this year in LMS. To achieve P3, P2 and then P1, take the championship lead, uh, shows how much work we've put into this. Endurance is, is a different kind of sport, it's still motorsport, but you need to have a, a kind of harmony and uh, chemistry in, in, in the lineup. Robert's really nice, um, yeah, and he's very helpful for me to, yeah, to, to learn with setting up the car, with just everything, how he drives, managing tyres, saving fuel. I guess he did a one more track of it. I have a great relationship with Johnny. I actually met him a long time ago when I was coaching a driver in Formula 4 and he was starting. Uh, he was already super quick. He fits very well into that team with Robert and I. Um, I have some understeer, low speed, change of direction still. I can do for one lap, but I think for race it's not bad. If you wait a bit on the front... Uh, Robert and I is like a old love story. <laughs> we, we share everything and we share the same mentality of racing. We also share the same idea of how a car balance should be, which helps a lot and is super important in endurance. Definitely, I think we go well together, uh, collaborating well, working well. We are friends, teammates, and, and we have the same passion for motorsport, which I think describes everything.
time may be fast approaching, but before they head into battle, there's a chance for the thousands of fans to see the drivers and cars up close, to collect some autographs, grab a selfie, before they enjoy the action of round five of the European Le Mans series. GT3 Derek Dubois clinched his first pole position of the year with the 59 Racing Spirit of Le Mans Aston Martin. In LMP3 it was Manuel Espirito Santo who put the number 17 cool racing machine on the pole. Giorgio Roda claimed pole position in LMP2 Pro-Am in the number 77 Proton competition car. In LMP2, Matteo Cairoli claimed the overall pole position, his first of the season and the first for Iron Lynx Proton, car number nine. Ready to go racing for the first time with the European Le Mans series here in Mugello. The black car, Pulses to Jonas Reed, on the right of the picture is Panis's Manuel Maldonado. They charge down to the tight right hander that is the first corner. Maldonado tucking in behind the lead and then swerves out to shut the door in Algarve Pro. Jonas Reed leads, a little lock up behind in the LMP2 field, but they all make it through safely. Manuel Maldonado on the inside of Jonas Reed has to ride the curbs to stay clear. Clement Novalak up to third foot into Europol, leaving Matthias Kaiser for Algarve Pro to hang on in fourth place, at least to try to. It's still two wide, three wide behind, but it's looking like a very clean race start so far. Jonas Reed starting to jump away from Manuel Maldonado. Everybody behind looking for positions, not quite able to make up the moves yet. LMGG3 lead battle, two Aston Martins, the yellow nose, that's Derek Dubois, the pole sitter, Sara Bovi, the pink Porsche, hangs on to second place. It was Martin Berry, the pink and blue Aston, was trying to get by her. Dark car is Miguel Cristoval, the Portuguese was the pole sitter in LMP3. He's got Alexander Bukantsov right behind him for into Europol. Bukantsov from third on the grid. The inside line at the start definitely favoured those who qualified odd numbers. Bukantsov looking to try and challenge the cool racing driver for the lead here. Maybe Jonas Reed. Behind is the battle for second place. This is tight, isn't it? Manuel Maldonado. But Clement Novelac is right in the toe as they race past the pits. 
over the brow, down the hill, into the tight right hand of turn one. He's got a big overlap and he manages to hang it round the outside. That's a good move from Clement Novelak. So into Europol up to second in LMP2 and LMP3. Here's the lead battle in LMGT3. Derek De Boer in the Aston Martin with the yellow highlights behind Sara Bovi, the Porsche with a tighter line. Can she use that overlap or is she going to run out of speed at the end of the straight? She's right in the slipstream. Racing Spirit of Le Mans from pole. Sara Bovi, the Iron Dames from the outside of the front row of the grid. She's got a good head of steam. Had to pull out of the toe pretty early, but she's still got an overlap. And we've seen already you can sit around the outside and not lose too much ground. This is such a good circuit for racing and it comes back to her. She has the lead down into the second corner. Clement Novelak around the outside of Jonas Rees. That's a change for first place here in Mugello. Novelak is absolutely on fire. He went by the Iron Links Proton machine around the outside. Take a look again. He had a really good overlap as they got into the braking area. And Jonas Reed had no answer for that. All Aston battle for second. Derek Dubois, the pole sitter with the yellow highlights, blue and pink behind. That is the grid motorsport by TF Aston. Tom Ferrier running the team. And Martin Berry looking to go around the outside. Has he got enough grip? to sit there to the left-hander. Yes, he just about does. Up into second, but not by much. And the Lamborghini is right there as well. Hiroshi Hamaguchi's already got by the Formula Racing Ferrari. You can see that behind him. Now he's looking to have a go at Derek DeBoer's Aston Martin for third. He is having a fantastic start to the race. Old trouble for DKR, that's their Pro-Am car. The Australian driver, Andreas Latour Cannon just running out of roads and once he's in that gravel he is a passenger that is a big hit safety car is out i'm afraid the dkr car is out of the race as well no passing as they head back to join the safety car queue we take a look again at the start Jonas Reed on the left of your screen, Manuel Maldonado on the right. Maldonado tucks in immediately to shut down the challenge from the Algar Pro car and then swings out wide immediately afterwards to try and go around the outside of the leader. That doesn't work. On board now with Francois Perodo started 19th, 7th in the Pro-Am class. And it was a really clean start, probably the best of the season so far. Going back to green, it is into Europol who lead from Iron Links Proton and then Panis, not a great restart from Manuel Maldonado. He's got the Algarve Pro Card, Matthias Kaiser right behind him, the blue and black machine, tucking into the slipstream. Maldonado did not do that at all well. He's having to defend hard. He should have been right on the tail of Jonas Reed. Reed breaking a little early. Cold tyres and cold brakes off the safety car. Just being cautious. And Maldonado didn't make the best of that, did he? He's in this long queue of cars that are tailed up behind him. But for seventh place, this is into your pole. Sebastian Alvarez, the green and yellow, going by Johnny Edgar. Who had such a good race last time out in the AO by TF car. LMP3, this is the battle for fifth place. Jacques Wolf, Racing Spirits of Le Mans around the outside. Alexander Matchell for DKR and the yellow and orange right behind now. That's Team Virage, Julien Gerby. So he's closed right in on this battle as they have tussled. Jacques Wolf, Racing Spirits of Le Mans with the yellow highlights. So Gerby goes around the outside of Alexander Matchell. Good move by Julien Gerby. Now he sets off after the Racing Spirits of Le Mans car. Team Virage up to sixth, down to seventh. DKR's number four. And the B2 cars in traffic into Europol under pressure. Sebastian Alvarez and Lorenzo Flutzer goes by him, the cool racing car, and AO by TF as well. Johnny Edgar in the red and white car is up to seventh. And that's what happens if you go offline and you get caught behind one of the GT cars into Europol. Sebastian Alvarez, they're losing two places. And now he's under pressure from Cool Racing's 47 car.
That's Frederick Vesti, and right behind the black and gritty Nils Kuhlen for Duquesne. And the first of the United cars is there as well, that's 22. So Alvarez under real pressure. Here comes Fred Vesti. Can't quite get through there, but look at Nils Kuhlen around the outside. Fantastic stuff. AO by TF's Johnny Edgar under pressure now. This is the seventh place. Sebastian Alvarez wants that position back. Around the outside, this does work. We've seen it all weekend. You have to be brave. You've got to carry that momentum. And then the inside of the left-hander becomes yours and that completes the pass. Good stuff by Sebastian Alvarez. We're on board with Johnny Edgar. Alvarez regaining some of the lost ground. LMP3 lead battle here, side by side. Yellow and green, Alexander Bukantsov, Miguel Cristoval alongside him in the cool racing car. The blue and black. And Bukantsov with the inside line. And that LMP2 car in front of them has helped Bukantsov. He squeezed in front of Miguel Cristoval. And Cristoval now with pressure from behind. The Euro International car with the red highlights as the P2 car from Inter Europol goes the other side. Left Cristoval nowhere to go. And Matthew Bell there squeezing through. Car number 11 up to second place. Into Europol lead, Euro International second, Cool Racing third in LMP3. But here once more comes Miguel Cristoval right behind Matthew Bell. Sweeps to the outside. He'll sit there around the outside of turn one. No, didn't feel the confidence under braking. Oh, and Bell's car squirming under acceleration. But he just keeps his nose in front into turn two. The red Ferrari, Scott Noble for JMW Motorsport. This is Shaw Ori Samani on the inside for AF Corsa. Ferrari on Ferrari on Ferrari. Conspirator Race is right there with Duncan Cameron, the white and green car. And he goes by the AF Corsa machine. So JMW stay in front. Spirita Race move up one. AF Corsa don't go up one, they go down one. Foot to the top 10, Duquesne under pressure. This is Fred Vesti in the cool racing car. Got a really good run there on Niels Kuhlen. Oh, and a big swerve. The Dutchman has a big moment. Wow, got away without hitting anything, but those tyres will be absolutely ruined. With Manuel Maldonado, Jonas Reed in front. This is the battle for second. In traffic, slower car in front. Into Europol, the LMP3 leader, Jonas Reed, just manages to keep the door shut on Maldonado in the Panis racing car. Onto the straight they come. Sweeping down into the pit lane. The battle will continue in the pits then. And that means the pressure is all on the team members now. Replay of Sebastian Alvarez and Miguel Cristoval. Alvarez on the inside, hitting the cool racing driver. Knocking him through the gravel. Trouble for Miguel Cristoval. Cool racing, facing the wrong way. Now that's in turn one. Is there something wrong with the car? Ah, Julian Jerby on the outside, battling for position. And Cristoval trying to avoid contact. Doesn't, but spins as well. Leader in the pits into Europol. Clement Novelak bringing the car in. Meanwhile, Matthias Kaiser for Algar Pro, flashing the headlights at the car in front. Cool Racing's Lorenzo Flusa is right behind him. This is the on-track battle for the lead. And the car in front, 77 Proton Competition Pro-Am car, is definitely holding up Matthias Kaiser, Lorenzo Flusa, trying to go up the inside. Not quite enough room, but not room for Kaiser to go through either. He is being held up by the slower car in front, onto the straight, Lorenzo Flusa, and they're both in the pit, so is AO by TF. Everybody else is pitting now. Frantic stuff here in Mugello. Why doesn't this track get used more often? Fred Vesti, cool racing. Oh, hello, this is not good. Going into the garage. This is definitely taking them out of contention. What a shame. Behind the yellow nose Panis car, the United Auto Sports red and blue, that's beating Joey Garg. And right behind him, you can see it now, Lorenzo Flusser for Cool Racing. This will be the battle for fifth position. Flusser on the inside. Job done. And runs out wide as well to deny the United car a chance to counter attack. Replay here of contact Ultimates. Louis Stern hitting Derek DeBoer's Aston. As he recovers, 
Manuel Maldonado, dive bombs at PJ Garg in the United Auto Sports blue and red car and goes through. This is the view on board with Maldonado. Contact in front, a slow car in front of him, notes. But PJ Garg in the United Auto Sport car lifted off a little more and suddenly the door opens on the inside for Maldonado. PJ Garg under pressure now from Sebastian Alvarez from Inter Europol. The yellow and green goes around the outside. It's a late lunge. He's just about level, can he stay there? I think Garg is keeping his nose clean, leaves racing room, and that is a position made up for Sebastian Alvarez. He's up to sixth, Bijoy Garg down to seventh. Two Nielsen racing cars, two US drivers, Jean Falp in 12th, and John is leading in Pro-Am in LMP2. Benjamin Peterson, his compatriot, right behind him in the other Nielsen racing car. What's the rule? Do not hit your teammate's car. Johnny Larson in the Formula Racing Ferrari. What are we seeing here? Oh, he spins, trying to stay out of the way of the LMP2 car of Rodrigo Sales, and inadvertently forcing Sales to take to the gravel anyway. Well, that was a narrow escape for both drivers. Julian Jerby, orange and black, and alongside Torsten Kratz, WTM by Rinaldi Racing. This is the battle for second place in LMP3. United also sport P2 car, definitely not trying to get involved in that one. Now there's room for him to go by, or is there? Yes, there is. And Julian Jerby made the move stick on Torsten Kratz. Jerby up to second. Sara Bovi leading in LMGT3 in the Iron Dames Porsche. And they have had so much speed all season long everywhere they've raced and yet they have had nothing but misfortune. Battle for third, Maldonado under pressure, Jonas Reed going around the outside of the yellow, black and red Panis racing car. And the Iron Lynx Proton driver's got a good run here, just about still there, there is an overlap but he just bailed out on that one. Maldonado is shutting the door pretty firmly. It's a good choice I think for Jonas Reed. In the pits, AO by TF, Johnny Edgar handing over to Robert Kubica. Battle for 10th in LMP2. Oh, look at this, the Paris racing car now with Artur Leclerc alongside Vladislav Lomko in the yellow and green of Inter Europol. And he's still at it. Battle just in front of them. AO by TF coming out of the pits and a spin for Kubica on cold tyres. Everybody avoided him. Now can he get out of the gravel? On the right, Proton and Algar Pro battling for position. They've been out of the pits for a lap. Robert Kubica comes out on the inside. I don't think there was contact. I think he just lost it on colder tires. He finds terra firma. Oh, team can't believe it. On board view from Kubica. Let's listen then. Oh, there was a touch. That was the Iron Lynx Proton car of Maceo Capietto. Lead battle in LMP3. And that is Torsten Kratz, car number 12, ahead of Matthew Bell for Inter Europol 11. 88, Alexander Bukansov into Europol competition. And all three of them have had a chance at the lead. WTM by Rinaldi, the white and red car out front at the moment. And the LMP2 cars just interrupting the battle as they go by, breaking up the traffic. But those gaps close right up again. Replay here. Oh, Bukantsov having a lunge at Bell. Didn't work for him. Artur Leclerc with Ritomo Miata in front of him in the cool racing car. This is the battle for sixth place. Artur Leclerc for Panis Racing. Goes outside, cuts back, no, stays outside. Great move, he moves up to six. What's this? Oh, this is trouble contact. Somebody's lost a wheel. Duncan Cameron. Now, top of the screen, Cameron swerves out behind the Ferrari, hits Rashad de Jeras for Edex Sports, damages the front of his car, can't avoid a second contact. And it is the Ferrari's right front wheel that comes off. There it is. Richard de Jeris also badly damaged. Is this going to be a safety car? Well, there you can see the upright, the rim, and what's left of the tyre from the Ferrari. And de Jeris is going no further. Safety car deployed. 
Safety car deployed. We are under safety car. Leader slow down. We are under safety car for a double recovery at T50. Oh no, you can't write this stuff. Sara Bovi, the leader in LMGT3 in the Iron Dames Porsche, held by a red light at pit exit. Back to green flag racing and the lead battle, Einlings Proton and Algarve Pro. So Oli Caldwell in the blue and black of Algarve Pro. Maceo Capietto for Einlings Proton in second place. French driver with a good run here. Is he going to send it on the inside? No, he's not. Almost outbreaks himself. Can't quite hang around the outside. He was in two minds there. He was neither one nor the other. Now he's on the outside. That becomes the inside in turn three and he's through. Good restarting by the Frenchman and having a little weave there as well to keep the Algarve Pro driver behind. Lots of cars bunched in traffic by the safety car. Top 10 LMP2 battle, Duquesne, the green and black and United Autosports and AO trying to go through this LMGT3 traffic. Hiroshi Hamaguchi in the green Lamborghini around the outside, Alessio Rivera and contact. Yeah, of course, a Pro-Am car and the Lamborghini are in the gravel car as well. This is down at turn one. Alexander Bukantsov facing the wrong way. Whoa, spin turns it. Virtual safety car. This is what happened battling with Torsten Kratz and contact between the two of them. Francois Perodo in the AF Corsa garage. There's Mathieu Vaxivier. They're the other drivers of Alessio Rivera's car. This is Alessio Rivera's view, there's Hamaguchi on the right hand side, goes out of visibility now and there's contact. Well Rivera wasn't right up by the apex curb, but then there was a Lamborghini there. There is the Lambo, trying to stay out of the way, two wheels on the curb on the inside. Maybe not quite enough room. Let's ride on board with Hamaguchi, take to the curb. Ooh, now that's a tough one to call for the stewards. But the penalty might go to the faster car of Rivera. From virtual safety car, we now go to full safety car, and that will close the field right back up. You just saw Alessio Rivera back on track for AF Corsa. Pit lane is closed. Back to green flag racing. And the Iron Links Proton car rushing away in front into Europol with a slower car in front. Can't pass before the start finish line. Europol car now goes by and Panis Racing will follow. Cool Racing under pressure from Duquesne. No change there at the restart. Top five as they were. Pink Porsches, the Iron Dames in third place. Chasing Proton Competitions, Claudio Schiavone, who's a lap down with the rest of the LMGT3 field side by side behind. That's fantastic stuff, isn't it? That's 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th and 10th together. This is Esteban Masson. He's in the thick of that in the Kessel Racing car, the teenager. You can see him at the top of the screen. Trying to have a look around behind the Formula Racing car. Rahul Fry under pressure now from JMW. But the car in front, Claudia Schiavone, is a lap down, car number 63. She gets the toe from her teammate. Iron Lynx and Iron Dames are the same crew. Oh, and a huge accident for Schiavone. Rahul Frey ran into the back of Claudio Schiavone and fired him off into the wall. What a disaster for the team. Well, Schiavone is moving, and that is the only good news out of that. The safety car will come out. What a plane wreck. Michel Gassi in the pin cat. There's Julian Andlauer. View on board from Axel Jeffries in the Iron Lynx car, right behind. I think he got hit by debris as he avoided the incident going onto the grass. No matter how many times you see it, this is not going to be a good look. Rahul Fry tries to pull out of the toe, but suddenly the slipstream pulls her right into the back of the car in front, her own teammate. And there is debris everywhere, hitting cars all over the place. Claudio Schiavone, the man who runs Iron Lynx. What a lucky escape. 
safety car is out. The car is rescued. But we are going to a red flag. There is just no way to clear up that debris field with cars still going. So everybody stops on the grid. Heimlings Proton, Masio Capietto leading. Oliver Gray second there for Inter Europol. Arthur Leclerc third for Panis Racing. This is how they'll restart. Well, the Kubica and Nicholas Nielsen chatting. Getting ready to go back to racing. There will be two further formation laps behind the safety car to get tyres and brakes up to speed. The clock has started counting down once again. So the entire field heading off from the grid. Matteo Cairoli. There's Alex Lynn. He's getting ready for his stint. Back to green we go. Iron links into your pole panis. That's your one, two, three. But cool racing Algar Pro having a shout at this as well. Into your pole. Around the outside, Iron Links on the inside. Capietto hanging on. Huge lock up behind from Artur Leclerc. Looks like there was a little bit of contact, but Leclerc is up to third. Ollie Caldwell for Algar Pro going by as well. Yes, he does. An AR by TF. The red and white car of Robert Kubica also taking advantage. And there is the Duquesne car trying to come round as well. Dreadfully hard restart there for the cool racing crew. And in 37, Ritomo Miata down to seventh, down to eighth, make that now as Duquesne go by, down to ninth as into Europol go by. Wow, that's a shocker and still worse to come. The first of two United Autosports has 23 currently ahead and 22 goes through as well. And suddenly from third at the restart, halfway round the lap, he's outside the top 10 and Nielsen are looking to have a go as well. LMP3 and LMGT3 cars in traffic. 17 is Cool Racing. And there is the RLR M Sport car number five. Now that's down in 10th place. Oh, in trouble. The Cool Racing car hard into the barriers. Are you okay? Yeah, a big one, but I've got the wheel off. I'm okay. You can't rejoin. You've got a right rear puncture. It's over. Virtual safety car and more trouble for the Iron Dames. Rahal Fry has run into the back of the Aston Martin of Casper Stevenson. Well, she had been in front of the racing Spirit of Le Mans car. So what happened? Take a look down here. Oh, he dives underneath, bumps his way through, and then gets to the virtual safety car and stands on the brakes. Catches her out completely and everybody else behind him as well. It's Europol in from second, Oliver Gray handing over to Luca Giotto. Pits are open during a virtual safety car for three laps. There's Cedric Altamar's damaged cool racing car being craned away. Matteo Capietto, Ironlinks Proton, handing over to Matteo Cairoli. Coming in from the lead, ahead of Duquesne, who are second on the road. And from virtual safety car, once everybody has had three laps to take fuel, we will go to a full safety car once more. Frantic action in the pit lane, but super slow motion out of it. And there is the Iron Lynx Proton car coming out back in front of Panis Racing. Critical pit stop, well handled. It's been a shocker so far for the Iron Lynx operation. Let's see if their LMP2 car can turn their frowns upside down. Marcio Capietto there, and his dad Guillaume, Prema Racing's technical director on the right-hand side. Back to green we go. It is Iron Lynx Proton that lead. Matteo Cairoli ahead of Charles Milesi for Panis and Alex Lynn for Algarve Pro. Then Louis Delatraz, Paul De Resta, James Allen, Luca Giotto, Tom Dillman, Ben Hanley. You're kidding me, what an all-star lineup we've got. All the top drivers out in the final hour. Replay here of Gail Julian for RLR M Sport, taking the LMP3 lead away from his own teammate, Daniel Alley. 
White and black Ferrari leads to LMG T3. That's Manu Kala down the inside. Formula Racing's Conrad Larsen. Dive bomb 66, the JMW Ferrari of Jason Hart. They're battling with that black and orange GR Racing Ferrari, but Ricardo Perra is a lap down on them. Still holding up the 66 car though. Manu Kala, white and black, trying to go around the AF course at LMP2 car, but can't. And the 66 now gets by the GR Racing car, but look at Conrad Larsen for Formula Racing. The dark red and white, he's got a great run going. Over the hill, down the inside to take the lead from Manu Kala, one of the most experienced drivers in this field. That's a great move. Into the thick of this LMTG3 battle comes the battle for second place with the yellow sides. That's Panis Racing, Sharmi Lacey, Alex Lynn right behind him for Algar Pro. Both of them race regularly against each other in World Endurance. Milesi for Alpine, Alex Lynn in the Cadillac. And they continue that battle here. Milesi with the upper hand for the moment. Look at the talent in this Pro-Am field. Ollie Jarvis, Le Mans winner and multiple IMSA champion. Nick Yellily, factory BMW driver in the Nielsen car. Ben Viscal in good company in that Proton competition car. There's 24, Nick Yellily. Final round of pit stops. Alex Lynn stays in at Algarve Pro. And at Panis, Charles also in the pit lane. And the undercut looks like it's worked. Milesi on his way out, but Alex Lynn at speed for Algarve Pro. And with a little heat in the tyres, he goes through as well. Great work by Stuart Cox there and his team. Undercut in Pro-Am for Algarve Pro as well. Ollie Jarvis coming out on the left of pitcher for United Autosport. And Alex Quinn goes through for third in LMP2 Pro-Am. Great pit work for Algarve Pro. Luca Giotto right under the tail of Louis Delatraz in the AO by TF car. Delatraz with the inside, but Giotto with a head of steam and into Europol. Move up the order into fourth place. Into Europol hunting once more. Charles Milesi for Panis Racing. The 65 car now is the target of the yellow and green machine of Luca Giotto. Giotto's all over the back of him as they come through slower traffic. And Milesi can't hold him off. Luca Giotto just sweeps around the outside. Brilliant stuff. Oh, a stall in the pit lane and another for Gal Julian RLR M Sport, the leader in LMP3. This is a disaster. Here comes the chasing car. Gilia Oriol for Team Virage takes the lead with less than 10 minutes to go. All going crazy in the final few minutes. Kessel Racing's Daniel Serra chasing Lorcan Hannafin in the grid motorsport by TF Aston Martin. This is for the lead of LMGT3. The Ferrari with a good run round the outside. The car guys machine has been under the radar until these final stints. But Daniel Serra, the Brazilian, very experienced in GTE particularly, and he moves in front. Lorcan Hannafin still right with him. And these faster cars behind might offer the British driver a chance to retaliate. But for now, it is Kessel Racing, Daniel Serra leading an LMG T3. And I'm sure when he thinks about it, the irony of Serra taking a win away potentially from an Aston where he's won so many world endurance battles in an Aston will not be lost on him. Kessel Racing, Grid Motorsport and Formula Racing, the top three in LMG T3 with six minutes left in the race. On board in second place in LMP3 with Gao Julia. Julien Orion in front, but three or four seconds a lap slower after that horrendous pit stop from Gao Julia. Couldn't get out of the pit lane. He is now closing down on the leader, but time is running out surely. Six seconds and only three minutes in which to catch him. Matthias Besch leading in Pro-Am. That's the Richard Mill by TDS car. 
Matteo Cairoli and Ironlinx Proton leading the race into the dying moments. It is the final lap here after a fairly disastrous race for Ironlinx up to now. This is going to be a very big bit of salvation for them. Outright victory in Mugello for the team based in Italy. It is victory for Ironlinx Proton, their first in the European Le Mans series. Jubilation from the team, from Jonas Reed, Massimo Capietto, and I'm sure also from Matteo Cairoli. Ironlinx Proton, the winners in LMP2. The Pro-Am victory going to Richard Mill by TDS. LMP3 won by Team Virage. And LMGT3, Castle Racing, coming out on top of the pile. It's over, over. Just six cars failing to be classified at the finish after what was largely a clean race. And what a result for the Ironlinx Proton team. Fantastic stuff. Uh, I mean, it's, I think it's the best moment of my career so far. I mean, just, it's, it's amazing. Um, we nailed it. Uh, Matteo did a great pull up yesterday. We had the whole race much more or less under control. I think um, we had a great car. The teammates did a great job. The, the whole team, everything was perfect. Strategy, oh, like, just speechless. A first win for Ironlinx Proton, Algar Pro taking second into Europol in third. And with one race remaining in Portimao next month, the championship being led by AO by TF. They are just six points ahead of Inter Europol's 43 car, with Panis Racing a further nine back in fourth. Our LMP2 Pro-Am winners, Richard Mill by TDS, Rodrigo Sales, Matthias Pesch and Gregoire Sosi. Another very happy crew. It's an incredibly special win for us. Absolutely love driving the circuit. Quite difficult with the traffic, but uh, most importantly, it means we're back in the championship hunt. So uh, we really needed a win today and, and the entire team delivered. Great strategy, good driving, great pit work, everything. The whole team just did a fantastic job. So it's incredibly special, especially at this track, because it's it was not an easy race for anyone. Behind Richard Mill by TDS, Algar Pro taking second in Pro-Am and overall, and Proton Competition 77 car taking third. A moment to cherish for the Richard Mill by TDS team, and Rodrigo Sales was exactly right. That victory has put them right back in the championship hunt. In fact, they are just two points behind AF Corsa, with Algar Pro also potential champions in third. Not perhaps the easiest of races for our LMP3 winners, Team Virage and car number eight, Julian Gerby, Bernardo Pinheiro and Gilio Orion. But maybe the tough ones feel better. My stint was, uh, was only uh, fuel saving. Uh, was all, but uh, yeah, it was a new experience for me to, to fuel save a lot. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're on top today, so I am really happy for the championship. I don't know who it is now, but we are coming, and yeah, I hope to finish well in Portimao. Team Virage Trio on the top step of the podium. RLR M Sports number 15 car after that pit stop disaster, still salvaging second place. And 88 from Inter Europol taking third in LMP3. Euro International's number 11 team not on the podium here and that has cost them because they now have a single point lead over today's winners team Virage with RLR M Sport just a single point further back. Two points cover the top three heading into Portimao. It will be crazy.
Castle Racing claiming LMGT3 victory here. Ferrari winning in Mugello with Takeshi Kimura, Daniel Serra and Esteban Masson. Serra putting their nose in front inside the final 10 minutes to take the win away from Aston Martin. It was very difficult, uh, he was driving very well, no mistakes, uh, had to use a bit of the traffic to, to catch him. I think I pushed too much in the beginning, so in the end uh, it was quite difficult to manage the tyre degradation, but anyway, it was nice to win the second in a row. The job well done, top step of the podium for Kessel Racing, Grid Motorsport by TF so close, and yet second place their reward, and Formula Racing's Ferrari taking third. A critical win too for Kessel. One race remains and they now top the standings by two from Racing Spirit of Lemon with TR Racing in third. And that is it for the fifth round of the European Le Mans series. Mugello has produced some fantastic racing and the championships will be decided in the season finale in Portimao.